You know, it's rather appropriate that we're in the middle of a fog bank, considering that we're with the 2015 Land Rover Discovery Sport. This vehicle has been built and produced, of course, in Great Britain, and now it's here in the United States. And coming up next, does it deserve the name Discovery? wanted to have a frank conversation with you before we get this thing really muddy and we will <laughs> first of all you may be interested in the tires they are continental cross contact mud and snows so far they've proven very good on the street and have been okay on ice do not know how they're going to do in this thick mud and lots and lots of puddles but I can tell you that this is not the beefy off-road tire that you would need to do serious off-roading that's just obvious but then again most of the people who are going to buy this car are not going to go boulder crushing. In many ways, it's a lot like the Evoque. Think about it that way. More mud coming up, more ruts coming up. Hell yeah. <laughs> Ooh, it's a big one. No problem, through mud. No problem. Angry Brits, keep on coming. What you're looking at here is a two liter four cylinder engine that puts out 240 horsepower and 250 pound feet of torque. Now it's hooked up to a nine speed automatic transmission that sends power to the front wheels, but because it's an all wheel drive, four wheel drive vehicle, it sends power to the rear wheels when it's needed. Uh, now, this is a turbocharged engine and it was built with components from Ford. With that being said, there are a few minor glitches, one of which is the fact that there is some turbo lag and there's a little bit of transmission lag too, so it takes a little time to decide and then accelerate when you're trying to get up and go. I'm gonna bust through a, a large pile of snow here. There we go. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> the approach angle isn't the best. It the nose sticks out a little bit, but 8.3 inches is pretty good, and that is minimum ground clearance. I've been messing up when I've been talking about this vehicle because I keep calling it anything other than a Discovery. And there's a reason for that. I used to own the first generation Land Rover Discovery, which was a very tall, narrow, off-road truck. And this is, well, it's not. This is a wagon. For lack of a better word, it's a wagon that can do some light off-roading quite well. And as Roman proved, it's able to ford you know, a two foot in change river in Iceland fairly well. In terms of its looks though, I actually really like the way it looks. I just wish I wouldn't call it a Discovery. I wish I would call it, I don't know, a Steinway or something. I don't know, anything else than Discovery. The front end looks a lot like the Evoque. The rear looks a lot like the Evoque. The roof line does taper back, but nowhere near as severe as the Range Rover Evoque. Altogether, it's a very handsome, clean design where they didn't fuss it up with too much extra stuff and I think that that's going to go over very well, especially in the United States. I actually got hung up on an XM radio station and wouldn't let go for a while. So I don't quite, ex you know, this is a pre-production vehicle, so it's entirely possible. I'm going to go through some mud while we're talking here. It's entirely possible that the... Uh, you know, once this thing is in full production, that won't be in as much of an issue. I'd like to think so. But there are some thoughtful touches that I really like. One of which is there are a lot of places to plug in and recharge your phone or pad.
When talking about the interior and the way that the 2015 Land Rover Discovery is set up, I wanted to point out one thing that kind of encapsulates the whole car, and that's the store panel right here. And the reason why is because everything good and everything that's slightly negative that has to do with this interior is right here. Let me explain. What you have is raised white stitching and absolutely beautiful attention to detail when it comes to the layout of where everything goes. But at the same time, you have things that are in really unusual places. For instance, the memory sequence for the seats. Uh, it's in a place to where your elbow hits occasionally and it's really hard to reach over and activate. Unfortunately, we can go around that rock. But the only things that have gone over the rock that are sort of in this class, the Jeep, Cherokee Trailhawk went over it with no problem. But it's higher, it had grippier tires, and it was built to do that. Thirty-two point seven cubic feet of cargo space with these back seats up, the second row. Sixty-six point nine cubic feet if you fold them down. A third row seat optional. That's pretty impressive, but you know what really gets me? The amount of room you actually have in the second row seat, it's awesome. A really good vehicle for people who have little ones who need to scramble into their own seat. On top of that, 8.3 inches of ground clearance, just enough small obstacles, but on top of that, low enough for kids to get in. It's actually kind of impressive. It also competes with other vehicles such as the Audi Q5 and to a lesser extent the Audi Q7 and even vehicles from Jeep like the Cherokee and the Grand Cherokee. As a matter of fact, it actually has, if you think about it, a very similar setup to the Cherokee with the exception of the optional third row seat in terms of a nine speed transmission and its four wheel drive system just in general. Now, when you drive this on the streets, I can tell you that it performs better than I expected. It's not tippy at all. It's fairly level on hard corners and at the same time, it never seems to give up very much. Not bad, not bad at all. I think that this car really does deserve a place in some people's garages, so I'm gonna say this. On the TFL scale of buy at least it, rent it, or forget it, the 2015 Land Rover Discovery gets a buy it if you're not looking for a hardcore off-roader but want something that can do the job when it's called upon. Actually, I'm really fond of the vehicle. If it only had less lag, yeah, I think it's between a buy it and a lease it. It's like right in between the two. For the fast lane car, this is Nathan Adlin. Don't forget to go to tflcar.com for news, views, and real world reviews. I'm out of here, bud. You see you later. Poor cameraman's gonna have to walk all the way back. Bye bye.